radius and ulnar shaft fractures, radial bow and male reduction. How about the radial bow? 5 degree loss of radial bow equal 15 degree loss of spination pronation and also loss of the radial bow will decrease grip strength. Restoration of the radial bow is critical to good functional outcome of the patient. May reduction of the radial shaft fracture in adult can cause restriction of forearm rotation. 10 degree male rotation limits rotation by about 10 degree. 10 degree of angulation limits rotation by about 20 degree. It produces widening and narrowing of the interosseous membrane during rotatory movement. So in general, you can have loss of motion with more than 10 degree angulation. Try to avoid narrowing of the interosseous space. How do I know if there is malalignment or not? The deformity may indicate rotation. So if you have extensor bow or dorsal deformity, it indicates pronational deformity. So how you correct that? You hide the deformity by spinate the forearm. What do I mean by that? If you see the apex of the deformity dorsal in the x-ray, like in an AP or clinically, then you hide the deformity by spinating the forearm so you see the volar aspect and that means you correct it. You spinate the distal fragment. So to correct this rotational malalignment, the distal fragment needs to be remanipulated into spination so that it correctly aligns with the rotated, supinated proximal radius. And this usually happens more with proximal radius fracture. If you have a flexion bow or volar deformity, which is called spinational deformity, means the apex is volar, then hide the deformity by pronating the forearm. Just remember that hide the deformity. Do the maneuvers where you don't see that apex anymore. Another trick in knowing if the fracture is not aligned or rotated, well, a sudden change in the width of the cortex or a break in the smooth curve of the radius will indicate mal rotation, as you can see here in this diagram. Another clue is the position of the bicipital tuberosity. The theory is when the forearm is spinated, the tuberosity lies medially and it is 180 degree from the styloid process. So the styloid process is laterally, the tuberosity will be medially. This will help us in checking the rotation of the fractured radius on the x-ray to see if it is aligned or not. When the aligned well, the tuberosity lies posteriorly in the mid position and lies laterally in pronation. Just remember that, in supination, the radial styloid is lateral, so the tuberosity will be medial, and in pronation, the thumb will be in, so the tuberosity will be out, lateral. And when in mid-position, the thumb is up, so the tuberosity will be posteriorly, that will help you to identify rotation of the proximal fragment and line up the distal fragment in the same degree of rotation as the proximal fragment. So if you find that the bicipital tuberosity is rotated 90 degree to the styloid process, that is bad because normally it should be directly opposite, should be 180 degree to the radial styloid process. Then you need to remanipulate the fracture. And if you need to plate it in the proper position, then you do that. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.